All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. Today, obviously, we're talking about the Chicago Bears. They are 0-2 following a road defeat to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, who I just want to say are a lot better. They're actually so much better than people give them credit for. Now, everybody's looking at Justin Fields. Everybody's looking at Getsy. Everybody's looking at Eberflus. I just want to say this before we get into the video. If the Chicago Bears take down Kansas City in week three, Everybody will forget about weeks one and two. I don't like the play calling. I don't like the execution. It looks like a team that won three games last season. Oh, wait, they did win three games last season. So we're going to be patient, or I'm going to be patient at least. Now, I know Justin, through the first two games, it doesn't look great, all right? He needs to make better decisions, but they also need to call the plays better uh, they just need better game planning these guys it almost seems like they don't know what they're doing they don't know what they're supposed to be doing rather and that is just not the way to do it you know i, I feel like guys are running the same routes justin's getting confused everybody is just getting confused but through two games justin fields 60.6 completion percentage 427 yards two touchdowns three interceptions my big issue with this is I don't need Justin Fields to be a perfect pocket passer. We've used the Cam Newton comparison all the time on this channel. Here's the thing. Chicago's still in a really good situation. They just need to let Justin loose. Justin needs to let himself loose. Unleash him. Play into your strengths. Lean into your instincts. Only five run plays for Justin Fields to start the season. For some context, Jalen Hurts is at, at about 15. Here's the thing. The quarterback class next year is the best I've ever seen it. On paper right now, we're only two weeks into college football. It looks like the best quarterback draft class in the last 20 years at the very least. So if Justin Fields is gone, well, at least you've got a great draft class with two first round picks. Keep in mind, Ryan Poles, Eberflus, Justin Fields technically isn't their guy. They did not draft him. Before we get any further into today's video, if you guys enjoy it, be sure to hit that like button, hit that sub button. My name is Jackson. I post daily Bears content with my buddy Eric on this channel. Thank you guys for all the love. We're trying to hit 2,000 subscribers. A like goes a long way. If we get this video to 100 likes, that would mean the absolute world to me. So outside of Justin Fields, there's... Still a lot of bright spots within the Chicago Bears right now. Offensively, we finally saw DJ Moore. Six catches, 104 yards, seven targets. We also saw Chase Claypool get eight targets, three catches, 36 yards, and a touchdown. So that was a huge, great bounce. It wasn't perfect. Chase didn't play perfect, but a huge, great bounce back game getting that touchdown in the fourth quarter from Justin Fields. So I liked, and this is something in our preview video we talked endlessly about, I wanted to see double-digit targets for DJ Moore and Chase Claypool. Combined, we saw 15 targets to the two of them, and that's exactly what I want to see moving forward. Running back room, Rashawn Johnson. We knew the Bears got a steal when they drafted Rashawn Johnson. But with Khalil Herbert kind of, you know, becoming your new running back one, getting rid of David Montgomery in the offseason, they also bring in Dante Foreman. You know, we were thinking, I'm curious how much we're going to see Rashawn. We have yet to really see all that much, but we saw a 29-yard run in that week two defeat to Tampa. So offensively, I've got Rashawn Johnson, DJ Moore, Chase Claypool, a bunch of guys who have really impressed me early on. And I also want to say Braxton Jones, Year two, he looks good. We want to see lower penalties, but he's looking, his future still looking bright. And then rookie draft pick, right tackle, Darnell Wright, he also looks good. Nate Davis, for personal reasons, missed week two, but in week one, he looked perfectly fine. Keep in mind, Tevin Jenkins is still out with an injury, but he was the Chicago Bears' highest graded offensive lineman last season. So I still stand by it. The Bears' offensive line, it's going to take time because... Offensive line, it's the longest positional group to get things clicking. So by week probably six, we can't, or I'm not going to be looking at the Chicago Bears offensive line thinking, uh-oh, because by then they should be rolling across the league. Look all across the league right now, especially because a lot of teams aren't playing starters in preseason. These guys just need more reps. Your offensive line just needs reps to get 
communication, to get timing, to get all of the little stuff down. It's just simply going to take some time. Defensively, there are guys like Edmonds, new addition, Tremaine Edmonds, 25 years old, who's already, I mean, we kind of knew he was a star linebacker in this league, but him and Edwards, the two new linebackers, they've had great impacts on this team. Stevenson, the the rookie, second round draft pick out of Miami, Trevon Dexter, the rookie out of Florida. These guys are looking really solid. Andrew Billings, the, the free agent acquisition from the Las Vegas Raiders. He's done a great job in two brief games. There's positives, all right? We have to keep in mind the Chicago Bears won three football games last season. Yes, they could have won five or six, depending on how you know those games went differently, obviously, but they won three. All right, so we have to keep expectations in check here. All I want to see, and we'll con- I've said this all summer, and I'll continue to say it on this channel, all I want to see from Justin Fields this upcoming season are victories, because Regardless of whose fault it is, Poles, Eberflus, Getze, Justin Fields, the offensive line, what, whoever anybody wants to point fingers at, it's going to come down to Justin Fields because in his career, he's what, 5 and 23, 5 and 22. You are what your record is. I, I've, I've seen the word overcoached be flaunted around on Twitter all the time. I fully agree with it. Lean into what you do best. Your first option's not there, your second option's not there run run baby we need to see justin running more which i know he wants to do he just looks like he's too much in his head right now because the offense there it's just this unorganized there's too much on organization right now within chicago's mm-hmm. offense but four rushes for three yards and a touchdown that simply is not going to work i was listening to the radio earlier today and i saw a great comparison you're kind of seeing this i know philly is two and oh but if you've watched philly's first two games without shane stike then you know they're kind of not leaning into their instincts with Jalen Hurts. He's a phenomenal runner, just like Justin Fields. Do what you do best. And I said it in the summer. I don't need Justin Fields to be the pocket passer he was at Ohio State. Look at Lamar Jackson. They're not trying to contain Lamar Jackson. They're not trying to force Lamar Jackson into being a 100% pocket passer. They're just saying, look, you do you. You do. You know what you do best. Go do it. We trust you. We believe in you. I want Justin Fields to run his ass off week three against Kansas City on the road. Nobody believes you can win this football game. I at least want it to be competitive. That's it for today. If you guys enjoyed it, be sure to hit that like button. Hit that sub button for daily Bears content over here on Chicago Bears Daily. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a great rest of your day. But guys... Let me know what you're thinking about the Chicago Bears after the first two games of the season. Peace.